So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I close the deal using the Burr method. And not just any Burr, the perfect Burr. Most people in today's world say that it's not possible to get good enough deals for this strategy to work. And that's 100% false. And I'm gonna show you how I've used this exact same strategy to amass a portfolio worth over $10 million. All using none of my own money as well. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Austin Rutherford, born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida now. I flipped and wholesaled hundreds and hundreds of houses, own over 70 plus rental properties. And if you're looking to get into the real estate business, make sure you smash that like button and hit the subscribe button so you can get all this content going forward. And this is no BS, like this is straight facts. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything here. I'm gonna tell you exactly how this entire deal came together start to finish. I'm gonna break it down more than anybody else has here on YouTube. And if I do that, at the end of this video, if you could smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate that because it allows me to get in front of more people and help more people. So if I follow through, make sure you smash the like button at the end of the video. So the Burr method, what is it? Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. So the first step of the process is to buy the house. Okay, well that sounds good, Austin. Well, what if I don't have the money? One of the first strategies you can use for buying houses using other people's money is called private money lenders. So these are just individuals that will lend you money to fund your deals. So they'll fund 100% of the deal, they'll fund the purchase and the renovation, and they can give you all the money upfront at closing. So then you then have the money to pay off the seller and the money to fund the construction budget. So if you wanna learn more about private money lenders and how to use other people's money to flip houses, it's way too much to go into detail on this video, but I created another video just on private money up here if you wanna take a look at that. Another strategy is called hard money lenders. And a lot of people get hard money lenders and private money lenders confused. Private money lenders is 100% relationship based and they will fund 100% of the deal. Hard money lenders like to call themselves private money lenders, but these are institutions, businesses that are in the business of making money that lend money to real estate investors, but they do not fund 100% of the deal. It's still a good option, but they just don't fund 100% of the deal. Private money funds 100%, hard money might fund 80 or 90% of the deal. So if you need a, you know, 100K for a purchase and 100K for a rehab, if they're funding 90%, they'll fund $180,000, and then you still need to bring the $20,000 to closing to close the deal. And then you have to front the rehab cost, and then they will reimburse you as the work happens. So you do need some liquidity, some money, to use hard money. But with private money, they fund it all from day one. And the third option is you just have cash already sitting in the bank. You have six figures, seven figures, eight figures sitting in the bank. That's not how I started. So that's why I like the other strategies. I personally love private money lenders because I don't like using any of my own money and they fund 100% of the deal. But if you have cash sitting in the bank, you can obviously use that as well. And I told you I was gonna give you no fluff. So here is a, a copy of my HUD statement for this deal. A HUD statement is when you buy or sell a house you get a copy of the HUD statement. So this is the same statement here, just page one and page two, but I'm gonna give it to you exact, the exact numbers. So I ended up buying this property for $77,600, but I paid an assignment fee to a wholesaler of $14,400. So I bought this property all in for $92,000. So you buy it for $92,000, but I needed the money to do that, right? So I borrowed $100,000 from a private money lender and another $17,000 from a private money lender. So I borrowed $117,000 and I bought this deal for $92,000. So it was about a $25,000 rehab budget for this deal. So as you can see down here, due to borrower is about $24,000. And the reason it's not $25,000 because that's how much we budgeted for is because there's other little closing costs here and there like these ones here. So you, there's always gonna be a little bit discrepancy but I got $24,000 at closing to fund the renovation of this deal. And remember, this is a private money lender. They did fund 100% of the deal, and I got this $24,000 at closing to fund the renovation. If this was a hard money lender, this money would be escrowed, meaning I would not get a penny of this. I would have had to bring a down payment, and I have to do the work first before getting in any of the uh, construction funds paid out to me. So private money lender is always better because it's actually truly no money out of pocket. Now that we figured out how we bought this property, now let's talk about the renovation. And this is the hardest part about real estate in my opinion. And very few people actually talk about this. Contractors or construction can make or break your deal 100% of the time. I've been on the winning side of this often and I've been on the losing side of this sometimes as well. So I know from experience, unfortunately, but you gotta make sure you hire the right contractors. Otherwise your, your renovation budget can literally double, triple or quadruple 
if you trust the wrong people and you pay the wrong people for work that's not done properly and then you have to go back in and pay again for the same work to be ripped out and replaced in the right manner. So I'm gonna walk you through this house and tell you a little bit about the construction that we did. So first things first is the kitchen. Kitchens are extremely important because this is what sells houses or brings tenants into the property. So you gotta do the kitchens the right way. And then we replaced all the flooring, put in all new LVT luxury vinyl tile flooring throughout the entire house. Then we also gotta make sure the bathrooms look good. So we might update the vanity or the shower or the flooring, but whatever it is, we gotta make sure the bathrooms are in good condition. And then the rent is based on the amount of bedrooms that are in a house normally. So if you can add bedrooms to a property, you might be able to get more rent out of this property in the first place. So we're just painting all the walls, putting in new doorknobs and changing the light cover switches to white to make them look more modern. And then the renovation budget is one thing, but there's other costs associated with the deal outside of just the renovation thing. There's called holding costs and you gotta make sure you factor those into the deals as well. So let's say for this example, I borrowed $117,000 at 10% interest, right? So what does that mean? $117,000 at 10% interest is $11,700 per year in interest that I have to pay my lender for lending me the money in the first place, which comes out to be about $975 per month in interest that I have to pay my lender. And then you gotta add insurance and utilities and HOA fees on top of that. So it was costing me about $1,300 per month in soft costs or holding costs to renovate this property. So every month that went by, I lost another $1,300. So think about this. If it takes you three months longer to renovate a property, or maybe you have a bad contractor in there that delays the project by three months, you lose $3,900 just by not having the right systems in place and making sure that the deal doesn't continue. So make sure you understand the holding costs and how long a deal actually takes. Because with private money, you have a little bit more flexibility. With hard money, you usually have a hard stop on these loans. Their loans are for six months or 12 months, and if you're not done with the property and paid them off by the end of that, they can take the property back from you. So timelines are extremely, extremely important. So we talked about buying, we talked about renovating all with other people's money. Now we gotta talk about renting the property. And most overcomplicate this process. I get tons of questions like, well, how do you get a tenant? It's a super simple process. Me personally, I just hire a property management company to manage the properties for me. So I don't even deal with it in the first place. The first two properties that I ever bought, I managed temporarily before I'd figured out I didn't want to do that. But when I managed it, I put four rent signs in the yard and then I posted it on Zillow and Craigslist. So I put an online ad with pictures in a description on Zillow and Craigslist. Even now with my property manager, almost all the tenants that we get come from Zillow.com. So don't overcomplicate this process. Put your listing on Zillow and it's one of the best ways to get tenants into your properties at the right prices. And the other big thing here is if you put a bad tenant in the property, you can screw yourself. You gotta put the good tenants in the property. So before you rent to anybody, make sure you have them fill out an application with their social security number. Make sure you run a background check, you pull a credit report, you verify that uh, their income, you verify that they're actually still employed, you call their bosses, you do whatever you need to do to make sure that they still have money coming in and that they have good credit and that they don't have evictions or a criminal history because again, that can screw you up in the long term. So you wanna put a good tenant in there because bad tenants blow deals. Bad tenants can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. Good tenants can make your life a whole lot easier. So after you post it on Zillow.com, you can then find a tenant, go through the application process, run the background checks, and then rent it out to these people. For me, I rented my property at $1,350 per month. And now the next step, the refinance. This is the fun part, but this is also where most people get hung up on, unfortunately, again, because they overcomplicate this process. So how do you actually do a refinance? Hard money lenders and private money lenders for this step is all treated the same. Basically what you need to do after you buy it, renovate it and rent it, you have to go to a bank and say, hey, I want to refinance my property because you already have a loan on the property from the hard money or the private money. So you need to refinance, meaning that you need to pay off an existing loan and get a new loan on this property. So the bank will actually give you a new loan and then that money will pay off your old loan. So what does that process look like? The bank will do a background check and underwriting on you, making sure that you can qualify for a loan, whether that's debt to income or credit score or whatever, you have to have a certain credit score to get approved. And then you have to have a certain debt to income to get approved. The cool thing is on rental properties, if they are rented, that income can count to your actual income. So it actually becomes easier to qualify for mortgages 
the more rental income you have because the rental income, if you buy it correctly, is, is positive income. You're not losing money every month. And then that income gets added to your income. So it makes it easier to qualify for these mortgages. So for me, for this property, I bought it for $92,000. I put 25 grand into the rehab. So I was all into this deal for about $117,000. Now this doesn't mean that the property's worth $117,000. It actually rarely ever means that if you buy the deal the right way. It means that the property's worth a lot more than that because you went in and you did the work and you forced appreciation on the property for it to be worth more than what you're into it for. So like I said, they send the appraiser out at this point to evaluate the value of the property as it stands today, not how much money you had into the property. And then you submit your documents to the bank, your proof of income, your credit reports, um, all these things you submit to them. If you don't have income or you don't have credit, it's okay, you can still do this. You just need to go out there and you need to get a co-signer. What's a co-signer? A co-signer is a family, friend, anybody that's willing to sign on the loan for you to be responsible for the debt, but to also count their income and their credit to get you qualified to buy the property. So if you can't afford it yourself, get a co-signer to then sign on it for you so then you can afford it and then you can pay them off at a later point. And then you can refinance the deal again in a year or two once you can afford it by yourself and then get that other co-signer off of the property so then you're the only one responsible for the debt at that point. And most banks on the refinance give you a loan based on the new value, not on what you have into it, but on the new value of the property, usually 70 to 80%. So if the property is worth 200 grand, They'll usually give you a new loan anywhere between $140,000 and $160,000, 70 to 80% loan to value, LTV loan to value. So let's rerun all the numbers on this thing. 92K purchase, 25K rehab. And then the new value of this property is $165,000. The bank that I work with, and they're all slightly different, that's why I say 70 to 80%. The bank that I work with refinances these properties at 80% loan to value. So that means the bank is gonna give me $132,000 back at closing. And then I held this deal for about six months. So remember, it's costing me $1,300 per month to hold this property in expenses like interest, like taxes, like insurance, like HOA, like all these things that I still have to pay every month. So about $1,300 a month on six months is $7,800 in holding costs that I still have to pay on the property. And then another about $2,500 in closing costs. So when you work with banks, there's closing costs and transfer fees, conveyance taxes, all those things. So for this one, it was about another $2,500. So I'm all, all into this property for $127,300 roughly. This isn't down to the penny, but it's very, very close. And remember the bank is giving me a new loan for $132,000. So I'm all into this deal for less then the bank is gonna give me back on this deal. So think about this. I will literally own this house using none of my own money and I'm making $4,700 day one for owning a house. The bank's paying me $4,700 for me to own that property. And this is how you start building generational wealth. Not only am I gonna make money on this deal for the rest of my life, I'm able to pass these properties down to my kids. That's generational wealth. But one last thing we gotta cover here. I rented this property out for $1,350 per month in rent. My new mortgage on this deal that I have to pay every single month is $889.51 per month. My PI, my principal and interest to the bank is $715.09 per month. My taxes is $1,493 per year, which is $124.42 per month. My insurance is $600 per year, which is $50 per month. So if you do all that math, it's $889.51 that I have to pay out every single month. So that means my monthly profit on this deal is $460 and 49 cents. I make every single month just by owning this property, which I didn't put any of my own money into in the first place. So people always ask me like, what's your ROI? What's your cash on cash return? It's infinite. If you get a house with none of your money whatsoever, the return's infinite. There is no good return because returns unlimited. So the question is how many times would you do this to get a free house, to make money every month and to build generational wealth. I know the answer for me. I'm going to do this as many times as I can. So as promised, no shortcuts, showed you pictures, showed you HUD statements, showed, showed you everything out there to show you exactly the real numbers on the perfect bird deal, how to get a house 100% for free using other people's money. So if I followed through with what I said, I was going to break this down to you. 
you could follow through and smash that like button, it'd be greatly appreciated. It allows me to get in front of more people here on the YouTube platform. And don't forget to go back and watch that private money lender video that I talked about on how to raise money from other people to fund your deals. You need OPM, other people's money, to do this strategy. So make sure you check that out. Drop any comments below. Let me know any questions you have. And I look forward to seeing you on all the videos in the future. Appreciate you being here. We'll see you on the next one.